Hey guys, uh, I'm back actually with Windows 10 this time. I just upgraded my machine to Windows 10. Originally I've had Windows 8 uh, Enterprise and I found out I wasn't able to upgrade to Windows 10 so I had to upgrade to Windows 8.1 and from there I had to jump start uh, the whole update process and get to Windows 10. Uh, Windows 10 is actually pretty cool. You're looking at my machine now. This is my rig. Uh, 8 gigs of RAM, dual processor, I'm running Windows 10 Pro, this is a fairly old machine and Windows 10 runs pretty smooth on it. Uh, I must admit I really like it and I decided to make a review on it. Um, so Windows 10 is actually a, a compilation of a bundle of features I think taking jabs at Apple that's with Cortana and with the Notification Center and also at Google uh, taking a jab at Chrome and CentOS taking a jab at virtual desktops. Um, you'll see here that this is actually a brand new upgrade. I just upgraded less than 24 hours ago um, and decided to make a video. Um, let me just jump and tell you that the charm bar no longer exists and I want to say thank God for that. I hated moving the mouse to the corner and getting those charms and clicking on them. It was a very annoying and terrible mistake made by Microsoft. They actually took it back to Windows 7 uh, with this, with the Windows 8 UI, uh, which is the user interface. Very cool stuff. So the start button is back, and the start button now contains the tiles, live tiles, and it also contains um, what you're accustomed to, which is seeing all your applications. And of course, it gives you jump lists of your most used programs, um, your recently added programs, file, file explorer, and of course, a brand new settings window. Um, the new settings window for Windows 10, they simplified the most important settings of them all, which is very different than your control panel. Um, and let me just get over to my control panel. So one thing uh, that is very cool to, to know is that with previous version of Windows, meaning Windows 8 and 8.1, you would have to hit the Windows key and X to get this menu, which would give you really useful tasks. Um, this is a jump list of like power tasks for get into command prompt, for example, um, or not just command prompt, but being able to, uh, let me go back to it, being able to go to run or do a search or go to file explorer, control panel, task manager, uh, things of that nature. And you'll see here that the majority of, of the items that you look at actually has the same kind of look and feelish of Windows 8, but with a nice new Metro UI for Windows 10. So, as I said, the start menu is officially back. Uh, you can now just hit start and you can go to all your applications. Everything will be listed there. I've already installed a couple of things. You can see I installed Adobe, um, Adobe Acrobat. I've installed a Photoshop, my FTP Explorer. Um, I've installed a phone, my cell phone, my work phone, um, my virtual fax machine. I even installed Rain Meter. Uh, which is how you see the time and the weather up top on the top right corner. Let me close my phone. Um, yeah, so this is very cool. I really like this. This is very nice. No more having to go over to the right or to the bottom or seeing a huge screen take over my screen with a bunch of boxes that I never really click. No one actually ever really clicked them. They were pretty much useless. Um, they didn't remove them. They actually added them right here to your start menu. The live tiles actually exist within your start menu here. But they don't consume that much resource anymore, and they're not as annoying. So another cool thing they added is the notification center, which is this little chat icon right here uh, on the bottom right of your system tray. And going to your notification center, you'll see that you immediately see every single action taken by every, by every app that you're using. So for example, if you have an app that says an update is available, that goes into your notification center. Uh, you have a virus scanner, it tells you you have a virus, goes into your notification center. Um, Notification center is really cool. Even emails or calendar, appointments, meetings, reminders, all of that appears here in a list in your notification center. So that's really cool. And they added a bunch of little menu items here. From the notification center, you can go into all settings. You can quickly make a note using Windows OneNote. Um, you could see that location is blue because right now it's tracking my location. I'm using a desktop, not a, uh, a laptop, but it reverses my IP address to know the weather. I can connect a mobile device, but I'm not using a Windows phone. Uh, tablet mode, if I have a tablet, which I don't, and quiet hours, which disables notifications. So this is actually really cool. I can just turn on quiet hours, uh, and I won't receive any notifications, or I can bring quiet hours off, and if 
a notification does come in, I will see it to the, to, uh, to the right in my taskbar. So really cool. I like that. Uh, that's a nice little bite at Apple because they, they've already had this a million years ago. But now it's time for us Windows users to have it. Um, they tweak the UI completely. I mean, even if you look at the volume meter, you'll see that that has changed. It looks very different. Um, of course, you have your network icon, which instead of taking up the entire side of your screen, it just brings up a box. Um, I don't use Wi-Fi. I'm hardwired, so there's nothing really to see here. And then, of course, you have your other start menu icons. In this case, you see I have my iCloud, my uh, OneDrive, Rain Meter, and uh, Office Upload Center. Um, moving to the next thing is maybe one of the main reasons, most attractive feature is Cortana, which is this little icon, little circle icon right next to the start menu. And when I press it, Cortana will come up and she immediately displays the weather and some kind of smart fact that I don't know, I may be interested in. Um, supposedly Cortana actually tries to um, study and learn um, your actions and moves. And when you hit that icon, she'll immediately bring, bring up relevant information that you may be interested in uh, recommend news for you or news from the web um, and things of that nature. But the cool thing is, is that I can type a question or I can actually ask her a question. So for example, I can click this icon and say, how old is Donald Trump? Donald Trump is 69 years old. So that is a great bite at Siri. Um, you know how Siri lives in the cloud and is able to gather information from Wikipedia, Wolfram Alpha, and various other sources. Um, Cortana does the same thing. She aggregates data from everywhere. She's very smart because she lives on the web and she consumes all that data and brings it to you. Uh, she knows measurements. How many feet in a mile? One mile is 5,280 feet. Or you can ask her something more practical. What's the weather like tomorrow? The forecast for tomorrow shows mostly cloudy skies with a high of 80 and a low of 73. Pretty cool, right? So she can do things for you, too. Um, for example, just ask her, what can you do? And she'll give you a list of things. She can create uh, calendar appointments for you. You can actually ask her, uh, what appointments do I have tomorrow? And she'll show it to you. She can set reminders for you, an alarm. She can even send an email to one of your contacts. So if I have a contact called mom, I could say, send mom an email. She'll bring up the email client for you. She won't actually, I, I doubt she'll dictate it. Um, I haven't tried it yet. But I know that she'll bring up that window, and it'll work with Outlook or Windows Mail. She can play music. She can get directions. Uh, facts, which we just kind of did a couple of facts. Um, she'll give it to you. Tracking, sports, showtimes for movies, finance, math, dictionary, weather. She can even translate. How do you say how are you in Chinese? Here's how to say how are you in Chinese. 你好. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> she, has, uh, she has infinite knowledge, as I said, and she can actually do a lot of things for you. Um, and it's nice to have it I know that it's simple to say, listen, I can just Google it, you know, why do I need to ask my computer how to do it? Well, why not? You know, the, the feature is pretty cool, and uh, uh, you go on Amazon and you buy yourself a little USB microphone, you keep it plugged into the bottom of your computer or the side of your screen, and you just press this little icon and you ask some random question. How old is John Travolta? John Travolta is 61 years old. What movies are playing tonight? Mission, Impossible, Rogue Nation, Vacation, cool. and more are currently playing in New York. And she knows really difficult math, too. What's 15% of 5 times 3 divided by 4? That makes approximately 0 0.56. Yeah, so she is brilliant um, because she's a robot, and she can actually give you any information you wish, um, including some country information. You can ask her, what is the capital of Russia? Moscow. What is the population of Moscow? 11.98 million in 2013. Pretty cool. I like that. I like the idea that I can use this to pretty much go crazy with really odd and weird questions. And if she doesn't know something, she'll bing it for you. She'll Google it for you. So if I ask her something that she has no idea what I'm asking. How old was Bruce Willis when he made The Fifth Element? Right, so she'll immediately pop it open, and uh, she'll try and get the answer for you. So you'll see here that she pops
popped it open in the new browser. So Microsoft is still staying with Internet Explorer, but is now focusing, shifting its gears into Windows Edge, which is a brand new uh, browsing experience by Microsoft. It's a really cool browser that came with Windows 10. The icon is actually right here for it. And when you press it, I really like this, it just asks you, where do you want to go next? So unless I have some bookmarks, I can just say, all right, let's go to uh, www.ingadget.com. And I go to Engadget. So I go to Engadget, it loads uh, pretty seamless, pretty fast. Engadget is a blog and about uh, tech, uh, techie kind of information. And let me go and click on the link. So here is a link here uh, for an article by Engadget. And one of the things that I like about this is that notice that when you're looking at an article online, sometimes there's a zillion ads. There's like a million advertisements on there. There's too much going on. I got this ad over here counting miles. I have a couple of boxes here telling me do this and do that. And the only thing I'm interested in is the actual article. So Edge has a nice little feature called Reader. It's a little icon on the top over here. And what it does is, is it just it eliminates all the unnecessaries. And it only brings you up to the article that you want to read which is very cool because if you're an avid reader and, and you actually go online and you read a lot you don't want to be sidetracked by a thousand ads you say you want to focus on a specific article um, this is one way to use a browser to read um, straight text the other thing which they added which is pretty cool is the ability to annotate highlight and make make all kinds of um, uh, marks on the actual website. So this little icon here which displays your your control. Say I'm reading this and I'm interested in highlighting something like uh, it's $15 so let me highlight $15. Or I want to add a, a comment to myself so I could just add a comment box and I could say anything anything I'd like and I can move that comment box and say alright let's move that comment box over here. And let's say I want to go grab my pen and I want to make a little star next to this or, or item or next to this item. Or I just want to draw a, a weird smiley face. It's really cool that they were able to add this feature in here where you can actually use a website as your own canvas. Um, where you can annotate note and actually save it or save it to your OneNote. Um, saving a web note is what they're calling it. It's actually a web note article. It, it makes a copy of the site uh, and allows you to edit it using OneNote technology and they even give you the ability to crop uh, certain things out or highlight only certain things. So you see here, for example, I made a copy of this text. Um, let me see something. Open Paint. Sure. Okay. Starting Paint. And I can paste right into Paint the piece from the website which I just copied. Very, very cool stuff. Um, not only you saw me just use Cortana to open up Paint, uh, you also see me pasting something directly from a website using uh, Windows Edge's technology. So it's really nice that you have the ability to canvas things out. Um, and they did a really good job with that. So I'm going to exit this mode, and it's going to take me right back to the site. So this browser is actually made to, to be a match uh, to Google. Let me take off reader mode, and you'll see I'm back at the normal Engadget website as it was before. And this is a jab at Google Chrome, uh, trying to battle out with that. That's what I think, personally, at least. Um, so that's a really cool feature that they added. So the Windows Edge, Cortana, the Start menu, um, you know, they give you the ability to still dock things left and right to the screen. Um, the majority of what you're used to from Windows 8 and 8.1 actually exists within here, but there's a lot of difference in the UI. For example, they're moving away from Windows Media Center, which is something that they're taking away. Uh, and what they're doing is they're moving into Groove. Um, and here, I wonder if Cortana can open it for me. Open Microsoft Groove. Uh, looks like she just, I guess it's just called Groove, not Microsoft Groove, but she just Googled it for me, or binged it for me, rather. They use Bing. Are you surprised that they're using Bing? It is Microsoft, after all. Open Groove. All right. Opening Groove Music. Right, so Groove Music is the marketplace, which not only you can buy music in, you can also download MP3s off the web and have that added to your to your list. So for example, I have um, my own music catalog that was stored on my hard drive prior to formatting, and I'm going to select an artist, for example, Alice in Chains, and you'll see I have, uh, I know, what is it, 14 albums on compilations, and uh, I can pick a song, um, any song. 
and it's like iTunes with a Metro UI. It's actually pretty cool. And it works really well with my um, smart keyboard. I'm actually able to go to my smart keyboard and say, all right, play a song for me. And when I hit the music button, it'll pop this open. And here, let me go to my Manson folder. And let's play a song. So I can pause it. And notice how it totally added the album art uh, and gave me uh, a whole little panel on the top right to scroll through music on my computer, which is very nice. Uh, they, they completely skinned it out. That's that's the beauty of of uh, Windows 10. They they made they gave a whole UI shift to everything. So I think it's pretty cool that they have added that. Um, they did the same the same thing with movies. I have a very a big movie library. It is one of my movie folders. You can see here, I have about 878 movies here. And say I'm going to go to Batman, and double click on it. It's going to open up in movies and TV, uh, kind of like Microsoft's Marketplace, where you can purchase TV shows. Um, and movies and it'll play your actual movies even though I use VLC player <laughs> this is it's very cool that you're able to have that uh, uh, VLC experience built into Windows although it will not play DVDs that's one thing that will not work they actually took out the ability for DVD playback on Windows 10 but you are able to get it back by downloading a program such as uh, uh, VLC and I could just go to search type in VLC and here's VLC media player now notice how fast um, Cortana is very responsive, is very impressive. In VLC Media Player, is just a free DVD player that you can use. Um, you could download it right online. In any event, this is my review of Windows 10. And I think I pretty much went over most of the core items of how cool it is and function. Um, it is free to get. Uh, as long as at one point you purchased Windows, I believe you can upgrade from almost any version. I went through hell upgrading from Windows 8 because I kept having problems with Windows updates. Um, I kept getting that stupid reverting changes uh, window and, and it took me 15 hours to freaking install all the updates. It was a complete nightmare and a waste of my weekend. But I was able to finally get everything going um, and migrate to 8.1. So it's really nice and everything is pretty much put together in a cloud because I signed in with my um, my Microsoft uh, Live account and that immediately popped open my OneDrive which is on the cloud and then I downloaded Microsoft Office and I went and I installed um, Office on this and everything is pretty much seamless. Every application here works together which is very very cool the way they had built it. Um, for example you'll see that when I'm in Word it'll automatically sign me into Word with the same account that I'm signed into Windows you can see on the top right um, in my other videos before I had upgraded I showed a lot of neat things with Microsoft Office so one cool thing is that I can create a file and I can just go and I can save it directly to my OneDrive and it'll be it'll live inside my Windows and my Microsoft account which is essentially the same account and if I go on a laptop or if I'm uh, let's say uh, in a hotel or using some computer somewhere in the world and I log into my account it'll automatically let me open view continue the file as if I was at home which is very nice I really like that ability and the whole security of the cloud being able to have important documents out uh, on there so it's a great job on Microsoft and uh, hopefully they're gonna continue listening to what people have to say you see, when you click on Cortana, you'll have actually have a bunch of icons here on the right corner. Uh, one displaying facts, as I said before. You have a little notebook here. Um, and another thing that they have here is provide feedbacks. So you can actually click this button and submit feedback directly to Microsoft. Now, I'm not sure whether they read it or not, but it does look like uh, they are trying to listen to what people want. Uh, this is why they did a total overhaul of Windows 8 and 8.1 with a, that retarded charm bar that I hated with a passion. Uh, which is now gone, <laughs> as you see. In any event, I have been gone for a while. This is my first video in quite some time. I'm going to try to make more videos. Um, you know, I've, I've I've garnered over 4 million views, so I just wanted to say thank you to uh, uh, everyone who watched my videos, and uh, thank you for um, all the letters and, and uh, emails I've received from people, and for all the job opportunities that I've that I received from people. A lot of people um, hired me to do various tasks, so I want to say thank you for that. Um, you know, my videos are only as good as the people who watch them. So thank you for watching my work, and um, hopefully I'll continue to put out some more stuff. Thanks again, and it's good to be back. Bye.